Since the release of Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone in June 1997, J.K. Rowling's fantasy novels have become the highest-selling book series of all time, selling over 500 million copies worldwide, translated into 80 languages. The popularity of the Harry Potter books grew into one of the most lucrative entertainment empires in history, spawning theme parks, merchandise and, of course, a highly successful film series, currently the third highest grossing film series ever. Welcome to Killer Queen TV. I'm Killer Queen and today's video is the top 10 Harry Potter films ranked from worst to best. First, at number 10, is Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them 2016. It's virtually impossible to not get sucked into Rowling's original Harry Potter series. The characters are irresistible, the world building is masterful, and the emotional hook parents sacrificing themselves for their child is as gripping as it gets. Fantastic Beasts takes place in the same magical universe, but there are no characters to match the most indelible from the original series, and there's no real hook. The charms that are here are almost entirely courtesy of the talenting cast, the most delightful being Dan Fogler, who's so impressive he looks like a silent movie star. You're just left wishing they had richer, deeper material to work with. Number 9, it's Fantastic Beasts, The Crimes of Grindelwald. 2018. The follow-up to Fantastic Beasts is arguably a bit more engaging as pure escapism, largely because there's less focus on the cute critters and more on the witches and wizards mythology we've grown so fond of. But we're two movies in and the spin-off series is still waiting for liftoff. David Yates is a really good director and he brings a signature blend of muscle and wit to the proceedings, but the story is disappointing. There are about a dozen subplots and they barely leave an impression, giving us little to care about. This makes Crimes of Grindelwald at once overstuffed and hollow where it counts. Next at number 8 is Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix 2007. It speaks volume about the original Potter series that this an entertaining and handsomely crafted fantasy adventure. Film is the low point. There is absolutely nothing wrong with altering source material when adapting across different mediums. That said, Order of the Phoenix is the longest of the books and nearly the shortest of the films. Still, it's a pretty good movie and at times it's a lot of fun. The final face-off between Dumbledore and Lord Voldemort at the Ministry of Magic is straight up awesome and jaw-dropping. Next up at number 7 is Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire 2005. In Goblet of Fire, 14-year-old Harry competes in the Dangerous Twizzard tournament, and perhaps even more scarily, he navigates teenage hormones and asks a girl to the Yule Ball. The impressive hat-trick of Goblet of Fire, the only entry directed by four weddings and a funeral helmer, Mike Newell. An out-of-character moment when Dumbledore loudly shouts at Harry, ruffles fans and falling right in the middle of the dense saga Goblet, doesn't stand as well on its own as some other entries, but mostly it's just a treat. At number 6 is Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets 2002. Some consider the first two Potter films to be the weakest, or even dismiss them outright, for being slavishly faithful to the books and too kid-friendly. That just isn't fair. These movies are splendid entertainment. They're worthy of a contemporary reassessment. Sure, a few more inspired departures and unexpected artistic flourishes might have done some good. At number 5 is Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone 2001. Warner Brothers bought the rights to Ron's enormously popular book series for £1 million, and the search was on for the right filmmaker to bring the Wizarding World to the screen. At one point, Steven Spielberg was in the running to direct. Only he wanted this to be an animated film, starring the voice of Haley Joel Osment. Eventually, the reins were handed to Columbus and our introduction to Harry, Ron and Hermione. Some of the CGI effects look fairly choppy, even in 2001, and many of them have not held up. The Quidditch match is still pretty amazing there. On to number four, it's Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows Part 1, 2010. Rowling's final novels split into two halves on the big screen. Some called this a gimmick, and for other franchises that later copied the movie. The Twilight Saga's final split entries were successful but disliked by critics. 
The Hunger Games ended up with a whimper and the gimmick drove the Divergent films into her early grave. It was the right choice here though. Next up at number three, it's Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince 2009. The most purely haunting of the Potter films, Half-Blood Prince juggles light and dark with remarkable grace. This is probably the funniest film of the bunch. It is often hilarious and intense. It carries out a PG rating and the level of threat and menace the filmmakers create within those bounds is just astonishing. Next up, and number two, it's Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban, 2004. Harry steps into a larger, morally murky world in the third film of the franchise. To explain Harry's journey, the picture cuts out much of the book and everything is from his outlook. The director's camera is almost constantly moving, creating a sense of forward motion and risk. Columbus's two entries respectfully recited Rowling's prose nearly note for note. At the number one spot, it's the very last film of the franchise, Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows Part 2, 2011. As for the two top Potter films, Azkaban is the most inventive and ambitious of the series, but Deathly Hallows 2 is the mightiest. The Harry Potter series ended with a streamlined crash of thunder. The filmmakers saw the potential here and they made the right choices across the board to realise it. It's hard to imagine this turning out any better than it did. That's what makes this the best Harry Potter film in the series. Thank you for watching. I hope you've enjoyed my top 10s. Make sure you subscribe so you can get notified of my future videos.